So, if you're a Juno React developer, you're probably handling your React errors the wrong way. And yes, you've been doing it this way all the time. So in this particular video, we're gonna go ahead and see what is the best solution to handle errors and why you should completely avoid using React error boundaries. So errors or handling errors is actually a very crucial part of any React application. Therefore, knowing exactly how to properly handle errors for like your inside of your components with hooks, fetching or async code, all that kind of stuff, and having it the correct way with a clean code is very important for us as developers. So if you're not familiar with it already, React has actually a standard built-in way of handling errors called error boundaries. But it's not that well-defined. It hasn't been updated since 2016. And it's a little bit still like outdated, it still uses classes, it doesn't support functional components, it doesn't support hooks, and so on and so forth. It doesn't support async code. So there's actually a lot of stuff, actually a lot of setbacks to go from this, but actually works really well for what it actually is. So to better understand how error boundaries actually work and how you can have the right solution for you in a cleaner code way. So I'm gonna use this particular example, which is like a checkout page where it allows you to check out and actually buy or pay for the products that are added to your cart. I'm gonna simply use this component to demonstrate how we can use error boundaries in here just to like catch errors and show fallbacks errors or fallback components or fallback UI when an error is thrown away. So screws in here, I got three error handling ways. The first one is using state, which is the normal way where you have like an error state in here. And whenever there's an error happening, you update the state, you set the error in here, then you can basically use the state in here to render whatever error component you have. The second one, error boundary in here which are using the standard react error boundaries or the third one which using the custom error boundaries package and let's see how each one works and which one is the best for you to use so if you start with the using state in here it's pretty simple so all you do in here we do have oh you got like a state in here you just do set error and error. And this actually is simpler because now we have only one error, but imagine if you have multiple errors that you need to handle. And yet, so you hear you can need like, you need to put multiple states in here, so on and so forth. And you handle all those states and actually check of it. It gets harder and harder. You have more errors to handle and more errors to like render the errors for it. But for us right now, for our example, it looks a lot simpler. So you simply have an error in here. So let's imagine where we're fetching. So we're doing, oh, fetch cart items. And when we fetch, in here if it catches anything so if an, any error got thrown away if something happened during the async call in here when we try to fetch the card items from an api endpoints or anything happens along the way so we simply check oh if there's an error we simply go ahead and update the state with an error in here and once the state is updated we just go ahead and do a simple if state check like checking in here before our actual gsx and we simply return our error component in here providing the actual error message and the error component here simply it's just going to be rendering an error page providing the error we just passed away and that's the simple solution and that's what most people actually use for simple errors but this doesn't have any good sides it, you can use it but it adds complexity as more errors and errors needs to be handled inside of your application or components in general so for example inside of the fetch cart items in here which is just basically doing a fetch to fetch the products and just having the products in here Let's say, oh, something is being thrown away, even though like in here, just we're using this to simulate an actual error or like an actual network error or something. Oh, it says, oh, error, cannot fetch products, server is down. So if you save and we get back to our component here, refresh, as Chris in here, if there is an error and if you open up like quickly the inspect tools, and if you quickly look at the console in here, you know, oh, there is like cannot fetch products, server is down, that's, that's being thrown away. So it didn't actually fetch and that's why we're seeing this error message. So using this way is simple enough, super straightforward, but if you have multiple errors or at least multiple components per error, you want to render them for different type of errors, it's going to get a lot more complicated than this example. Or if you want to like have it like an error, kind of like generic error that you want to display whenever an error comes up in your application. So this is actually going to get a little bit harder because you need to have the state. You need each components in the tree should have access to the state and actually be able to set the state. You can do that using context, but as I said before, it gets more and more complex when you have a lot of errors to handle for the second way or the second solution of how you can handle errors which is using the standard error boundaries like the react error boundary so simple in here you need to define first your error boundary so you can have or you can define multiple error boundaries like depending on what logic or what you want to render per error boundary so for example in here the error boundary has to be a class it doesn't support functions you can't have them as functional components we use hooks inside of them that's not possible so that's the first downside 
So you have to be a class in here that extends a React component. You do some state in here if you use a TypeScript. You do a constructor that you're going to put the state, for example, has an error and the actual error. And this particular class component has to implement two very important methods. The first one, get derive a state from error, which is a static method that returns the state when an error is being actually catched. So when the error bound, you actually detect there is an error that was thrown away from like a component or a child component just inside of it, it will actually call this particular method and this method should return a new state that actually gets applied to the component state in here and switch it. So for example, when there is actually an error being cached, we need to change has error to be true. So our component in here would know, oh, there is an error. I need to flip the render. I need to render the error products error in here because, oh, now because there is actually an actual error. And the other one, which is component did catch in here, there's actually just a callback that gets called and you can do whatever login you want in here. For example, we can do a console log error uh, and it has like error and error and info. So you can do pretty much anything. You can actually call like your API service and report errors that are happening. And of course, inside of the render right over here, we want to render our actual components that handles the errors. So we render our products fetching error component here and passing it the actual error, which is the same component we used before in here, the same thing. So if we check, oh, if there is an error, we render that. If not, we simply just render the children and everything else has to come inside of it as a child. So it has to look something like this, where error boundary, is the parent and all the children here inside of it. So anything is going to get thrown inside of any of these children. So for example, if you have like throw method or anything bad thing happens during the life cycle method inside of this one is going to be automatically being cached by the error boundary or a better way instead of having it inside of here, you can have it outside that actually covers the whole component itself. So you wrap the whole component using the standard error boundary that's going to be imported, which is the same error boundary we put before, and you simply just wrap that component with it. So anything happens inside of the component is going to be catched and handled and the fallback UI should be rendered by that error boundary. And remember, our fetch products in here is actually throwing an actual error. And of course, we're being fetching an errors or sorry, being fetching the cart items in here inside of the component itself. So if you refresh and look at this, there you go, it shows us checkout, it doesn't show the cart items in here shows total zero. So it still shows us the component, there are some like logs happening here from the fetching kind of component, but there's no fullback UI. I mean, why is that? Why it's not rendering a fullback UI for us? An error boundary should handle that. Yes, you're correct. An error boundary should handle that, but the React error boundary doesn't do that. In fact, this is actually one of the limitations, the absurd limitation of React error boundaries. So because this error in here is being thrown away inside of an async function that is not part of the rendering logic, so the rendering logic is this rendering, this G sx in here. So this is not part of it. It doesn't have to do that. It's actually an async function. So any async fetching something that is not included inside of the actual rendering lifecycle of a component cannot be catched by the error boundary itself. See, it doesn't make sense. It's really bad. I mean, most of the errors actually come from when we try to do async calls, when we try to save some data on the database or API, like the cart items as in our example in here, or something like that. But this limitation actually makes it useless. But on the other hand, how this actually can work and how we can handle the errors. For example, if we go inside the checkout summary, which is inside of the rendering logic is actually part of the GSX tree in here of our child components, which is inside of the error boundary. So let's say there's something wrong and happening here. Let's simulate this. And let's just go ahead and throw an error say, Oh, unexpected render error and save that go back to our code in here. And hallelujah, and now it's being handled in the error correctly, it's showing us the fullback UI, it works as expected. And that's actually the error that's been happening. So yes, react error boundaries cannot handle whatever inside of the async or anything related to that it can only handle what happens or the errors that are being thrown inside of the reacts rendering lifecycle itself. And that leaves us with the last best solution for you to handle errors in react, which is using this really awesome package which is called the react error boundary. And if you just look at the weekly downloads in here just going to tell you the full story it has almost 3 million downloads per week. So that tells you this is a very reliable component. Alright, so how can we use this component? For example, in here, if you can jump and get back to the same thing in here. So we got another component, which is basically the same as the other component that renders the checkout summary cart items and checkout button, so on and so forth. It does the fetching in here inside of the use effects with our fetch 
calculation, uh, calculate the subtotal, whatever. It works as it was before. But right now, we are actually being actually putting that inside an error boundary. And this particular component is being imported from the React error boundary package. So the error boundary actually gives you a lot of freedom to work with it however you want. Plus, the awesome part of this actually allows you to use functional components as error boundaries. So here, you can do look where you can supply a fallback component prop, and this will take any functional component or either a class component, however you want it. Products fetching error is actually the component. So if you go ahead and look at it, this is actually a simple component, the same component we did before that renders whatever UI for the error in here to show. And it takes as props, it takes the fallback props in here that are being imported from the React error boundary, which is the error and a reset error boundary, particularly the error in here is just going to be the actual error, which has a message, whatever error is being catched and it was thrown away from your code or from your uh, GSX syntax or from async fetching code, whatever has been put in here is that you're going to have the error right over here. And the second prop in here, which is super nice, this is actually going to allow you to reset the error boundary. So it's going to try to go ahead and do a re-render. Maybe it's going to work. So for example, you can do, oh, reload a page in here, put it in a side of a button, and this will reset the whole tree inside of the error boundary. So every everything, all the children inside of that error boundary is going to be reloaded and re-rendered. And you get also to work with an on error in here. So whenever you want to do some login or like on a login service or API, you can use this callback in here to do whatever login you want. Now, the nicest thing about using this solution or using error boundaries from the error from the React error boundary, which is like, for example, if you go inside of the child component in here, as curious in here, it actually gives you a hook out of the box, which called use error boundary from the package itself. And you can do show boundary. So you can extract the show boundary function in here and you can call this whenever an error is being catched and you can simply call, oh, show boundary. And this, you can just pass it whatever error you've got in here from your catch method. And this will go ahead and actually trigger the error boundary for you and it's going to render the error boundary. And this will actually pass you through the limitation you have before with like standard React error boundaries where you can't actually handle async code or fetching code. This way you can bypass that and you still can use actually a standard because this is this error boundary in here is still a mix between a standard error boundary and it has some extra features into it that make it usable with like functional components and you can use it the way we use it right over here. Now, since our code in here is actually throwing already an error that you know cannot fetch product servers down, if you look at the web page in here using the new ones, it works perfectly. And it actually handles the error, it catches the error, and it shows the fullback UI. And for instance, if we try to go ahead and look or click on the reload page in here, you click on it, it tries to screw in here, it tries to go ahead and re-render everything. So it tries to do a re-render, but yet yeah, still because it's still throwing the same error. So we're always going to be able to like see this error boundary. And even if the error is actually happening inside of a child component inside of the like rendering life cycle in here, like you're throwing an error in here with an expected render error occurred. If you go back and you do, for example, oh, refresh, unexpected render error occurred, it still actually handles that and it shows you a fallback UI. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully this actually gave you an explanation of how you can handle errors the right way in React and how you can use this awesome React error boundary package to catch your errors the right way.